Hi, I'm John, the engineer, great Canadian gambler, Tosh professor of poker systems engineering, Termel. And yesterday you learned about poker power tool number four. Given your odds against one opponent, how do they change against two to eight opponents? And we saw that if you lay off the one or two opponents, which are, you know, kind of warped, between three and eight opponents, there seems to be a consistency. For instance, between three and eight opponents, if you multiply the odds by your opponents, there's a certain range that varies for, say, four to one over ten, five to one over ten, six to one over ten, seven to one over ten. For instance, even money varies between 20 and 30 outs of danger. Um, between 32 and 40 outs of danger, that's about two to one against you. If there's 44 to 54 outs of danger, 3 to 1 against. If there's 54 to 64 outs again, 4 to 1 against. If there's 60 to 70 outs of danger, well, that's 5 to 1 against. If there's 65 to 75 outs of danger, that's 6 to 1 against. And if there's 70 to 80, 7 to 1 against. And if there's 75 to 85, 8 to 1 against. But the point is this, since it's always the same 10, and since we could figure an average of each span from the l number three to number eight, you could say that given the average in the middle, there's five to the left and five to the right, so that if you have three opponents, you should actually add five to whatever your number is. And if you have eight opponents, you should subtract five from the average. If you have four opponents, you should add three. If you have seven opponents, subtract three. And if you have five opponents, add one. And if you have six opponents, subtract one out of danger. And that is what you should do at the start of every before flop. Know what your adjustment is. And after that, all you do is multiply the number of outs by the number of opponents. Add your adjustment. And then find out that which is the closest average number to your number. In what span are you? So, here is the poker power tool. I haven't even given this poker power tool a name yet, but it is simply a simple way of coming up with the answers given in the previous chart for danger outs for three to eight opponents. One. Adjust for opponents seeing the board. As soon as you're expecting the flop, you have to decide if I got three, four, five, six, seven, or eight opponents. If you got three opponents, you're going to add five. Four opponents, you're going to add three. Five opponents, add one. Now, on the other side of the average, six opponents, subtract one. Seven opponents, subtract three. Eight opponents, subtract five. Now you're ready to go. Number two. You take your danger outs, multiply it by your opponents, and add the adjustment. When you get this number, 3, you now pick the range average for the odds of your being beaten. If you come near 25, well, that's near half the deck, so that's even money. If you come near 37 on either side, if that's the number 2 to 1 odds. If you come near 49, that's 3 to 1 odds. If you're closer to 59, 4 to 1 odds. Closer to 65, 5 to 1 odds. Closer to 70, 6 to 1 odds. Closer to 75, 7 to 1 odds. And closer to 80, 8 to 1 odds. Just test it out. Go back to the other poker power tool, number 4, and give yourself some problems. Multiply the outs by the number of opponents. Adjust for position. And then see if, sure enough, the number closest to that average isn't the number that you get. So that is the little poker power tool I invented yesterday to avoid my having to memorize that whole chip. The second column is really warped, but most of the numbers at the top of the two opponent column obey the standard poker power tool number one outs odds array. So it's only when you get down to the last three numbers, the 338, that you got to memorize anything. So you got poker power tool number one, and simple multiplication works all the time except for two opponents for 20, 23, and 30 outs of danger. Otherwise, it is this little machine here for outs against you, high numbers, and it is the standard poker power tool multiplied by the uh, danger outs by opponents for the uh, other ones, for these small ones and for the positive ones going your way. 
So there it is, a simple little power tool to tell you the odds of your being beaten given the number of opponents in a fraction. So back to betting that pair of tens into six opponents. Now, queen over card, six outs of danger, times six opponents, 36, plus one adjustment for six, and that's 37, and that's right on the average for two to one against me, so I'm still good 33% of the time. So I bet, and I get six callers. So here I am, a one to two odds not favorite, but I'm getting paid one to six, an extra four bets I earned if this is my moment when I happen to be good. And that's 133% profit on my investment at that moment without even considering the rest of the game. Next card, bam, comes the deuce. Well, I still think the same complete odds apply. So again, I bet out and I get five callers. So instead of being a one to two, I'm a one to five. So, per three plays, I make three extra bets, 100% on my money. If it's my 40, 35, 40% being good. And finally on the river when that jack hits. Well, by now I'm convinced nobody's got a queen. And they all think I've got better than queens because I bet against that queen. And now I bet out again. So, <clears throat> I'm going to find out because I'm going to call anyway. And when I know I'm going to call anyway, I'd love to bet out because... Usually they're too scared to raise, and if they do, watch out. But usually they just call when they have you beat. It's when they don't have you beat and they call that you make money. But if you had checked, they would bet all their winners, and you'd end up losing the same amount of money anyway. But when you bet, you make money off the guys with the lesser hands. So I bet out, and it went full, full, full. And the last guy called with his pair of eights, and that paid off completely. So there it was. I bet into that field of six opponents with six outs of danger because I knew I was still a one in three odds of being good. And I did the same thing on the next bet too. And I did the same thing on the river as well. So that using that tool let me make these wild bets people thought while all they were to me were overlays. I could have been outdrawn on the last card. Fine, but I made an overlay at that moment and I'm going to stay good for a remaining number of cards and improve for a remaining number of cards. So the man who's good going in is probably the winner coming out. That's usually what happens. Not many draws are more than half the deck. So that is how that system paid off for me. Flabbergasted the crowd. And yet, now you understand why. Two huge overlays, 133% and 100% on two bets back to back. And that's what generating a professional winning average is all about so you've seen all my poker power tools now and i don't think there can be too many people who can doubt it when i say i've had the highest winning average rate over the past 20 years because i've been armed with these things while other people haven't so you go out and learn them all and when you think you're good come and give me a shot come on along i'll play with anybody who'd like to over here at the brantford charity casino across the street where they got one of the nicest little poker rooms and they have limit hold them and of course no limit hold none of this squeezing and waiting and you know in in limit poker it's fast you get 35 40 50 decisions an hour and there's a certain kind of excitement you just don't get in no limit and because that danger of losing it all isn't there and people play fast faster so it's a wonderful little casino come on down play some poker see if you can beat the taj professor great canadian gambler john the engineer turmel now that is exciting engineering engineering brand new intellectual stuff boy would i have enjoyed spending my life doing a lot more of that instead of spending the last 30 years not in poker systems engineering but in poker chip systems engineering. Now that I've done this, I'm going to have to go back to try and save my planet from some clowns running a malfunctioning poker chip system. Imagine anything as stupid as charging interest on your poker chips. Everybody borrows 10, everybody's got to come up with 11, and those who don't, you foreclose and take their homes. What an ugly system these guys have done with their chips. So I've spent my last 30 years and my latest 115 posts before my previous poker posts, before I had a little time to spend on this, and now I'm certainly going to end up having to go back and try and show these morons how to fix their malfunctioning money poker chip system. So, but this is the kind of excitement that really happens when you invent a new system for doing something useful 
and to have condensed poker power tool into an equation and a simple little array of numbers to remember is a wonderful wonderful engineering experience so but now i got to get back to the more mundane poker chip systems engineering and try and convince these people that to run poker chips without interest like casinos do is the reason that casinos chips don't lose their value from inflation year after year so I have a funny feeling that the planet's history are going to remember me more for my efforts in poker chip systems engineering though I can tell you that I'm far prouder of my achievements in poker systems engineering so I'm John the Engineer, great Canadian gambler, Taj Professor of Poker Systems Engineering, signing off until I invent something new.